Make this the type of place that everybody wants it to be. He's been hard on recruiting, it looks like. Oh, yeah. He's, you every know, player mentions him. Yep. He, uh, you know, I think he works hard at that. You know, he knows that's where it starts. <laughs> hey, we can all be great coaches, but if we don't have those those players on the field, it makes it a whole lot harder. Yeah, it, that's where it starts. we got to get the guys that fit our scheme in here and that want to play for us. Who's been your this summer? Well, I think they they're talking about TJ has done a great job. Obviously, uh, Sosa's done a great job. Randy, in a quiet way, Randy Ramsey just working his butt off all summer. Those guys just stand out a little bit from what the strength staff has said. You know, we don't get to go out there with them and do anything with them, but listen to Coach True and his guys and just talking to the players. Uh, you know, obviously, you got on our side of the ball. You got to throw Scooter in there. I think he's unreal. But up front, those three guys, in my opinion, would be the best leader. You've got numbers all across the line. You know, to build off of consistency is a big thing. Uh, but also trying to build up. You have one good issue and another one to feed off of each other. Can you see that from guys like Randy and, and uh, McTell and Sosa, and maybe Dorian when he gets here? Where you get, you can feel pressure. Oh yeah, I think that's that's what you're looking for. You got to be at least two deep and not have a drop off, and hopefully three deep. And that third guy has to always be ready because one guy gets hurt. And we're going to rotate a lot. I mean, we're going to play up front between John and I. Hopefully, we can play 12 guys. And it, it in this league, you better be able to because. If you can't, you're going to be in trouble. We don't want our guys having to play 50 snaps a game. We talked to you pre-spring about just you've seen success here in Arkansas, but part of it. Can you feel that kind of building with what you guys are trying to do here? I really can. I think uh, I think the kids are excited. Like I've said time and time again, getting them to buy in and trust us. I think they're starting to do that. I know they're hungry. Uh, I know Coach Morse brings in a lot of energy. Chief brings a lot of energy. Joe Craddock brings a lot of energy. So these kids are excited about it. What we got to do, we got to be successful early, uh, you know. And then if there is a bump in the road, which there always is, you know, to be able to handle adversity and step back up and not miss a lick. And that's, you know, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be where the interesting part comes in when something like that happens. Did you talk about being depth, sir? Did you talk about depth all year from my walk in. Yeah. Talk about that. He had depth in the coaching with two coaches on the defense. <laughs> yeah. We're hey, we do have a little depth. We got myself, John Scott, and Coach Chavis will get down there and help us if he needs to. He started out as a D line coach, and then Marjay's there. So we're hey, we're working those guys consistently, and we're working them as hard as we can to get them ready to play because that's where you win in this league. With two coaches on the defensive line. How much communication is it between you and John? We're together every day. Uh, we're together every day. Sometimes we meet together. Uh, we meet separate, but we're always on the same page. You know, our whole career at the University of Tennessee uh, with Chief, we had two D-line coaches. Uh, when you're in this scheme, you have to have two D-line coaches, I think, because our defensive ends are completely different than our defensive tackles. They're asked to do different things. So you better either have two good coaches or you better have a good D-line coach with a great uh, graduate assistant to help you because they're two completely different positions. You've been here now a few months, and I can play it all again. Are you ready to just get to the games and get back? I am. I'm ready to get back, get started. You know, I feel like my wife and I have kind of settled in. We bought a house. We're excited about it. And just to get back on the field and get with these kids, I feel like, again, I've been away from them so long, it's going to be like starting all over again when we get out there Friday. At what point in the offseason does it hit you as a coach that you're like, okay, um, I played all the golf I 
can. I've done everything else I can. I buy all the honeydews. It's now, when, when can I start coaching again? When my wife looks at me and says, it's time for you to go back to work. <laughs> she can, tell, that, she can that tell you that. Time. Probably about after two weeks of being off, you know, not around the office. I can't stand being away from the office that much or be away from the kids that much because I'm always worried about them, wondering what they're doing, how hard they're working, you know. It's just, it just bothers me. Uh, it's it's a tough deal. It really is. You're always wanting time off, but then when you get to time off, it's like, well, I need to get back. <laughs> yeah, she can she can tell me when it's time for me to go back. She says you're getting that look on your face. You're not you're not any fun anymore.